Hi, and welcome to the Books That Inspire Supercut with all the related content put together in one convenient place. I hope you enjoy, and I hope you stay tuned till the end for a new addition to these lists. I used to have a large quilting book library. My husband might still say I have a large quilting book library, but I like lots of reference information. Over the years, I've called it down because I realized that the books I really love are the ones that are filled with process information or inspirational stories or people. Very few do I use as actual pattern books. I still have some of those, everything Bonnie Hunter and Edita Sitar, for example, but most of my now much more curated book collection is rather unconventional, I guess. Today, I'm sharing some of my favorite books. Books that inspire me and connect me with new ideas, old ideas, unexpected ideas, and the quilting community at large. The first book on the list oh, is heavy. Is Unconventional and Unexpected, American Quilts Below the Radar, 1950 to 2000, by Roderick Kirikoff. You guys, this book, oh my goodness, is everything. It's everything I love about a quilt. And it's a reflection of the quilts that I grew up with. As many, if not most, of the quilts are by unknown Southern makers. The photography is beautiful. The quilts are amazing. Oh, that's heavy. Hang on. The quilts are amazing and imperfect and wild. The essays and commentary from people like Kay Fassett, Denise Schmidt, Natalie Chanin are deep dives into the soul of a maker. This is what my mind and heart see when I imagine quilt. Expression, creativity, ingenuity, reckless abandon, and connection. If you love an everything but the kitchen sink quilt, you will adore this book. The next book is Southern Quilts by Mary Kerr. If you want to know how I know most of the quilts in the last book are by Southern makers, this is how. Mary is an awesome and talented quilt historian who has called on the expertise of other quilt historians, specifically historians of Southern quilts, to celebrate and explain quilts of the South. This book is filled to the brim with amazing photos and as much actual history of the photographed quilt as is known or can be surmised. There are specific regional characteristics to quilts, and I love to study the nuance of those differences. I'm a total geek, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Mary also has several other books combining vintage textiles, you know, those fragments and pieces with modern aesthetics and techniques, and I'll link everything below, but her work is really amazing. The next book, this next book, is my very favorite quilt book of all time. Little Quilts All Through the House, and it's by Alice Berg, Mary Ellen Von Holt, and Sylvia Johnson. My mom bought this for me in 1993, and my original copy, this one, uh, it's falling apart, guys. So I have a backup. <laughs> this little book about little quilts, doll quilts, is where I learned about color and creative freedom. While the quilts have intentionally a very vintage aesthetic, they also have sparkle and whimsy. There's a section on what they call magic fabrics, the fabrics that are unexpected and give these vintagey pieces pizzazz. And then there's the section that talks about maverick blocks. Oh my, it's just my favorite thing ever. When looking at vintage quilts, there's often that rando block that's turned wrong or has two pieces made from different fabrics. Maybe the maker ran out or had half the quilt quilted in the frame before realizing one of the blocks was turned. The choice to leave these things as they are is magical and bold and it's what I love most about quilts and quilters. Plus, my mom bought it for me when I was learning to quilt and 
Connections, guys. It's about connections. Speaking of connections, Casey and I found this book in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park gift shop. Man, we love a park gift shop or a museum gift shop. We can stay lost in there as long as we stay lost in the parks or the museums themselves. But book, book. A People and Their Quilts by John Rice Irwin. This book tells the stories of, um, hang on, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it because you'll see. A People and Their Quilts by John Rice Irwin. Quilts are a reflection of the people who make, use, and cherish them through the years. John Rice Irwin has personally conducted interviews with hundreds of old-time quilt makers, some of whom were over 100 years old. Detailed photographs taken by Pulitzer Prize winner Robin Hood depict an opulent conglomeration of quilts, from the community quilt that Alex Haley and Archie Campbell helped stitch to the marriage quilt which became known as the murder quilt. That's an interesting story, guys. Here, in their own language, is a first-hand account of people and their art, of people and their quilts. Guys, it's just so good. Quilts tell the stories of their makers and their time, and it's just, it's just good. It's kind of a thick read because it is, you know, it's dense text, but I just, I just love it. Quilts and quilting and handcrafts are powerful. And while the next book is out of print and only available at really high prices, I want to mention it anyway because of the continuing work and the organization that it represents. It's called The Sleep Quilt by Tracy Chevalier and Fine Cell Work. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced. It documents a creative, cooperative program and a quilt made by prisoners in some of Britain's toughest jails. Each of the squares documents what sleep means in prison. It is a powerful and heart-wrenching work full of people and connection and creative expression from unexpected sources. I'm linking the book below as well as Fine Cell Work Organization, whose mission is to train prisoners and prison leavers in high-quality needlework skills so they can engage in paid, purposeful, professional, creative activity. Oh, people are creative and have a story to tell. And this book reminds me to remember that. The next book is another that connects quilts and larger issues. In this case, the issue of health, both physical and mental. From fundraising for foundations and research facilities to quilting through illness or depression or as a coping tool, it's all about how quilts and textiles are connected to health. And it's called Quilts and Health by Marsha McDowell, Claire Luz, and Beth Donaldson. I find it infinitely fascinating and inspiring to read the stories from the makers and sometimes the receivers about what the quilt or quilting means for them. It's a beautiful book filled with beautiful quilts and stories and connections. From the serious to the sublime, the last book on my list is here for an interesting reason, but first I'll tell you about the book. It's Quilting with Liberty Fabrics by Jenny Smith. And seriously, guys, could it be any prettier? The book stands on its own merit with amazing stories about the history of Liberty Fabrics and prints and how Jenny came to Liberty Fabrics. And it has really intriguing patterns. It has this gorgeous Liberty Fabric reference in the back. And it's just, it's just exquisite all around. But the reason it makes my list of favorites is that that is my quilter's dream. One day I want to go to Liberty of London and just lose my mind buying bits and pieces and swaths of tantalon and then spend an extended period of time working with those fabrics and wallowing in their luxury. As a bonus, I want to mention Quilt Folk. It's, I hesitate to call it a magazine, it, no, it's not. It's a periodical about quilters. Literally, folk who quilt. And it's just the best day when it shows up on my doorstep. My family knows that we're definitely ordering dinner that day because I stay lost in the pages for hours. It's all about the people. So there, there is my own unconventional and unexpected list of favorite books. 
For me, it's all about inspiration and connection and story. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. Building on the unconventional theme, today I made a new list of 10 books, plus a bonus at the end, that inspire me to be a better artist, maybe even a better person. Come on, let's see what made the cut. First up is a book called Quilting a Lot with a Little. It's a great little book by an author that's actually local to me here in Texas. She speaks of her journey to and through quilting through many seasons of her life. Her approach is very much like my own, working with the resources you have available, time, money, material, skill, and enjoying the process through it all. She gives her version of how she works through a quilt and cites sources for further information as well. Overall, I think it's a great little book for quilters of any level and especially for beginners or for those people who might be feeling a bit stuck, it will give you the courage to blaze your own trail. I also believe that it might be free on Kindle Unlimited right now. I'll be sure and link everything that I can below, so check those out. Next on my list is the book Color Play. I mentioned this book in the Color Cubes video and it is truly inspiring. It's a book that details how colors work and play together. This book is very technical and also exceedingly practical. It explains the concepts and principles and it shows practical examples in fabric and paintings. I've only begun to study the contents, but I know I will come back to that again and again as a resource. Next, we have Bisa Butler Portraits. I mean, come on. It is just so beautiful. Bisa Butler is an artist doing incredible work, not only in the art form itself, but also in the message and the reach. There is so much to say and so much more that needs to be seen and said and recognized and shared and felt. My sister-in-law was recently in a museum in DC and sent me this photograph. I was thrilled that Elizabeth got to see this work in person and inspired and then extraordinarily excited at the idea of being able to plan my own walking trip to Washington DC in the near future. Until now, it hadn't been possible. Next, we have Fabric of a Nation. Again, Bisa Butler on the cover. This, this is the museum book that accompanied an exhibit at MFA in Boston, one of my very favorite places on earth. We were not able to attend, but my friend Tara Miller did. She visited and has a beautiful video about the Harriet Powers quilts. I'll be certain to link that in the description box. I looked through this book and I am in complete awe. I feel inspired, connected, and overwhelmed by the work and the stories and the lives contained within the quilts in these pages. You know me, it's all about story. Taking a different turn for inspiration, next we have Nancy Crow. Nancy Crow is one of my role models. Her ability to play and explore and expand an idea is fascinating to me. Let me find my page marker. This book also, this book, guys, this book is beautiful. I checked it out from the library and it was one of those where Casey's like, um, why don't you own that book? So, you know, off I go to my Amazon used books listings. Look, guys, look. It's just incredible. So now I have a copy of my own. But this book is, this book inspires me to work differently. I'm often moving fast and always on to the next project or idea. The thought of sitting with one idea and really doing a deep dive into that to squeeze all there is out of variations of that. Squeeze all there is to learn. It really sparks my curiosity. This is not naturally how I think or work, so I'm very interested in, 
interest so I'm very interested in seeing how these methods and ideas might inform and change my process and results. I've already got ideas brewing and my mind is reeling with possibilities. Do you do that? Do you work that way? Do you take an idea and really dig in and explore all the possibilities? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to smash that like button while you're down there. Next, similar, very similar, variations on a theme here, A Common Thread by Gwen Marston. I mean, it's Gwen Marston. What else is there to say? This is another one where one idea, take log cabins for instance, is explored and flows into the next and the next. Working in series is really pulling at my heart right now. I am really excited to dig deeper and see where it goes. Next, the next book is The Dressmakers of Auschwitz. Now, I have not yet read this, but I saw the interview that Karen Brown did with the author, and of course, it rang all my chimes regarding story, history, mystery, and connection. Quilts, and in this case, clothes, are interesting, but quilters and dressmakers and the humanity and the story, guys, that's the good stuff. That's the stuff that really, really gets me going, and I cannot wait to read it. I'll link Karen's video below as well. Okay, this one's, this one's gonna take me a minute. Quilts, <laughs> this is a hunker of a book. Quilts, A Living Tradition. I borrowed this book from the library, and again, Casey asked, um, why don't you own that? So off I go to the Amazon used listings, and now I have my own copy. But again, this book shows everything in American quilting tradition. And it has as much information as possible. I mean, it ranges from the very traditional to the very contemporary or, you know, modern. I hate that word, but less traditional quilts from other cultures, the Hawaiian quilting tradition, Native American quilts, Amish quilts, and then contemporary art quilts. It is a treasure trove, and I'll link any that I can on the used market below, because, you know, you're gonna have to find a place to store it because it's ginormous, but it is incredible. And finally, I have two books. The Freddie and Gwen collaborative books. Gwen Marston and Freddie Moran. Two people who I, I can't say enough good things about. But these books, these books are just, they're great. Again, they're used. I buy, bought used copies. Sometimes you can find them for a good deal. Sometimes they're a little spendy. But they're just... Guys, they're just full of color and joy and inspiration and working together. Working two people with very different sort of ideas coming together and that is freeing. That is inspiring. Like I say, they are filled with joy. I'm always motivated by two very different artists, aesthetics, blending and becoming just so much more than the sum of their parts. I'm also incredibly interested in the working habits and process of collaboration. I like to know how it all comes together and how two artists communicate and cooperate. I find that, in, I find that infinitely fascinating. Now, I promised you a bonus book, and this is one that was recommended to me in the last book, excuse me, this is one that was recommended to me in the last book video, and of course I bought it used. This is called Quilts and Coverlets, and let me get the author name for you, by Jean Ray Laurie. Now guys, it's Quilts and Coverlets, A Contemporary Approach. Guys, this book, this book is copyright 1970, and it is filled, now mostly it's black and white pictures, but it is filled with 
very modern, told you I hate that word, quilts. You know, everyone says, oh, I'm a this quilter, I'm a that quilter, I'm a... Guys, there's room for everyone. Here's a color picture. And there's room for everyone and there's nothing new under the sun, but there is your unique voice, your unique color palette, your unique eye and way of putting things together. And that, that is what's exciting. And I just find it interesting that there are all of these quilts and quilting ideas that are not new but that are still relevant. So there it is. A quick list of 10, well, 11, 11 books that inspire and delight me right now. Mostly they inspire me to work differently and dig deeper. I am continually awed and inspired by books and the stories of quilters. One book that is capturing my interest right now the Improv Handbook for Modern Quilters by Sherry Lynn Wood. Sherry Lynn is such a free spirit and a great hand holder for anyone new to working without a fixed pattern. You can check out this and the other books mentioned in the links below, and I do hope you'll share what books inspire you. I also hope you never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. For more inspiration, check out this video. I'm Amy, and I'll see you next time.